Jerry Palladino, I'm calling you out. You are wrong. So I've gotten a lot of messages from fellow Goldwing riders because of something that Jerry Palladino said in one of his videos from a few months back. So here, let me play a brief clip from that video so you can see what I'm talking about. Hey, Motorman here. And today we're gonna to talk about the motorcycles, the heavyweight motorcycles that are the most difficult to handle at low speeds. The top five. The number one most difficult heavyweight motorcycle to control at low speeds has got to be the Honda Gullwing with the DCT transmission. On a bike like this, without a clutch, you have to find that sweet spot between just enough throttle and just enough rear brake pressure, and that's not easy. So man, I tell you, I heard him talk about my Gullwing DCT like that, and it just made my blood boil, because those are fighting words, Jerry. <laughs> no, really. If you can't tell by my bad acting, I'm just kidding. And as much as it may pain some of you to hear it, Jerry is right. The gold wing with the DCT is not very good when tossed into a bunch of cones and asked to make tight U-turns. The biggest issue is the lack of control that the rider has over the friction zone. It still has a friction zone, but the gold wing handles it for you. The keys to slow speed control, remember, is keeping the motorcycle or the clutch in the friction zone, looking where you want to go, using a little bit of rear brake to help control the motorcycle, and you can also counterweight, so moving your weight to the outside of the motorcycle when you're really trying to tighten up a U-turn. But if you remove any one of these techniques, you make tighter U-turns more difficult. Because the DCT doesn't have a clutch, we're short one of those tools by design. And perhaps the most important tool for making tight U-turns is keeping the clutch in the friction zone. It makes the task more difficult to perform. So can it be done? Well, yes, but as Jerry said, it will take a very steady throttle hand and mastery of all those other techniques to do it very well. Okay, so I hope I've cleared up that point of the argument but the bigger question is, and I think it's why a lot of people get upset when you point out a negative about their motorcycle, does this make the Goldwing with the DCT a bad motorcycle? So here is how I look at motorcycles. This is very good at turning bolts, right? You get the right wrench on the right bolt, a little bit of elbow grease, you can turn just about any bolt that you want to. This is not very good at turning bolts. You know, you might be able to get the edge of it on the corner of a bolt, and if it's kind of loose, you might be able to turn it like that. Horrible at turning bolts. Really good at turning a screw, though. You get the right screw in the right bit. You can turn just about any screw, again, with a little bit of elbow grease. So, good for bolts, good for screws. You get the point? Motorcycles are the same way. So if you have a bolt that's loose and you need to tighten it, grab the wrench. Or if you're getting really mad because someone has said something negative about one aspect of your motorcycle and you got a screw loose, you might want to grab a screwdriver because this would be the better tool for the job. But really, does it matter what someone else thinks about your motorcycle? Get the tool that's best for you and enjoy it. You know, brand loyalty is fine, but if it causes your skin to be so thin that you lose reason, you need to get out and enjoy life some and maybe just try out a motorcycle from a competing brand. I don't care what you ride, two wheels or three, enjoy the ride and work to get better on whatever you own. Now the tool illustration is a much more extreme example than our question about motorcycles, but it illustrates the point well. Some tools are just better than others to get the job done. The Goldwing DCT may not be very good at winning trophies in a skills competition, but that's not what it was made for either. Even with its difficulties at making U-turns, it's still an easy motorcycle to ride at slow speeds in road riding settings or conditions. With the proper technique, it has no problem doing things that you would do on, every day on a motorcycle. Stop and go traffic's easy, pulling into a parking space. Because it's got a reverse gear on it, it's much easier than a lot of motorcycles to get out of tight parking spaces, especially if you're on a heavier motorcycle. 
But where it really shines is eating up miles on a long trip, especially if you have a passenger. Because of the DCT, it's an impossible motorcycle to stall because you don't have to manipulate that clutch at all. If you have to perform emergency braking, it's one less thing to think about, and you don't have to be concerned with what gear it, the motorcycle is in when you come to your stop because the Goldwing has already handled that. At the end of a long day in the saddle, the, riding the DCT is a pleasure to ride, and I believe it extends the miles that one can ride in a day just because of its relaxing nature. If I were purchasing my Goldwing again, I would still get the DCT version without a doubt. It's a fantastic machine and it's one of the best tools on the market for touring, for riding in comfort and as a commuter as well because of all the storage on it. And it has exceptional power and handles the road much better than many people would think because of its size. But the Goldwing is not a master of all things. No motorcycle is. Aside from not being real good in a skills competition, some other things or shortcomings of the Goldwing are it doesn't really function as a race bike very well, and it's absolutely horrible out on a motocross track. Which leads us to the question of what is the right tool for you? Well, only you can answer that, and there are a lot of variables that go into that correct answer. What do you want to do on the motorcycle? Do you want to take it to the track? Do you want to ride off-road? Or do you want a budget-friendly commuter motorcycle that's easy to maneuver in the city and to park? You know, frequently on MC Rider, we talk about getting your first motorcycle. I get a lot of questions about that. Is this a good first motorcycle? My answer is always the same. When someone asks me what's a good first motorcycle, my recommendations are I would buy used because you can save a lot of money that way. I'd buy a smaller displacement motorcycle I'd buy something that fits you well, that you're comfortable sitting on, and you're comfortable in the riding position. I would learn proper technique on that motorcycle and really refine your skills on the motorcycle. Then in a few thousand miles, say five or 10,000 miles, and once your skills are refined, you might look at moving up to a more powerful bike and one that better fits what you want to ultimately do with your motorcycle. Understand though that I'm not talking about just riding your starter motorcycle in a straight line down the road. If that's all you ever do, that's all you'll ever know how to do, and very few riders crash riding in a straight line down the road. You have to practice and you have to develop your skills that will save your life out on the road. Field Guide is a great place to find some of those skills that you need to work on and to help you master your motorcycle, and it's just easier to do that on a smaller bike. So why do I always recommend that type of motorcycle? Because it's the best tool to develop your skills on. Can you start on a heavy cruiser or touring motorcycle? Well, maybe, probably, but it will make the learning process much more difficult. It will take longer to develop your skills and it will definitely cost you more money if you damage the bike in a slow speed crash. So this might not have been the battle of online motorcycle trainers that the title of the intro to this video led you to believe it would be, but there is one thing that I feel comfortable saying that Jerry and I would agree on, develop the proper techniques and practice no matter what you ride. Till next week guys, it's Ken with MC Rider and I'll see you on the road.